Hello students, let us continue with uh, the topic data handling. This is the second episode in data handling. In our previous episode, we have learned about how to draw a bar graph, how to draw a double bar graph and also how to draw a pie chart. Not only that, you have also learned how to interpret the data when the data is given in the graphical form. In the present episode, let us learn more about how to organize the data. After watching this episode, you should be able to distinguish between a raw data and a grouped data, organize the data into frequency distribution table, draw a histogram for a given data, draws conclusion from the given frequency distribution table or graph. Organization of data. Students, in your previous episode, we have taken a small quantity of data, but when the data is large, there is a need for organization of the data. Otherwise, making meaningful inferences and conclusions become very difficult. So, in order to organize the data, we may follow various procedures. For understanding that, let us start with an example. A survey was done in a class to know the fruit which they like most. The responses provided by the students that is the data is given as follows. You look into the data given. It is mango, apple, pineapple, jackfruit, pomegranate, mango, mango, pineapple, apple, jackfruit, apple, apple, jackfruit, mango, apple, mango, apple, apple, mango, apple, pomegranate, apple, pineapple, mango, jackfruit, apple, pomegranate, apple, jackfruit, apple, apple, jackfruit, apple, 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 mango, pomegranate, pomegranate, jackfruit, pineapple. The obtained data is called raw data. It is called raw data because we have not manipulated or processed the data. The data has been obtained from a known source or primary source. Let us define raw data. The data available in unorganized form or not processed and collected from a known source is called raw data. Look upon the data obtained here. If we want to know that which fruit is liked by most of the students, then it is very difficult to say because the data is in a haphazard way. Unless it is organized, we will not be in a position to make various conclusions. This is how whenever we have a large data, we need to organize them. Okay. How to organize the above data? Yes, look into the data. How many fruits the students are liking? Yes, they have responded that they like mango, apple, pineapple, jackfruit and pomegranate. After knowing that the students like these five fruits, now we want to know that how many of them like each fruit. For this, we need to prepare a table. A table we will prepare with three columns. In the first column, we will represent the fruit like mango, apple, 
pineapple, jackfruit and pomegranate. In the next column, we will mark it as tally mark. That means, whenever an item appears against that, we will put a slash or it is called one tally. Like that, one after the other, we consider each item, then we put tally marks against their respective tally mark. One tally mark represent one occurrence of a particular fruit or one count and it is used to represent it by a symbol slash. Now, you consider each fruit and put a tally mark against that fruit, continue to do like this for all items. Now, look at the tally marks. Whenever the fifth tally mark comes, we put a cross diagonally to all the earlier four tallies and make a bunch of five tallies, so that it makes counting of frequency quite easy. And further in the third column, you will write the total number of tallies against each fruit. We get the third column as 8, 16, 4, 7, 5. The total become 40. Once you obtain a table like this, then it is very easy to interpret the data. Let me ask which fruit is liked by most of the students? What is your answer? Look into the table. It is apple. Which fruit is liked by least of the students? Yes, it is pineapple. So, you see when it was presented in an unorganized manner, we were finding difficulty to interpret the data. But now, when we have made a frequency distribution table, then it is very easy to interpret the data. In the table, the number of students like each fruit that is given in the third column also called a frequency. So, let us know how to define frequency. A frequency is defined as the number of times a particular event or observation occurs. So, such table when we prepare by showing the frequencies, the table is named as frequency distribution table. The definition for the frequency distribution table is as follows. A frequency distribution table is a table which shows the frequency of the event or observation within a particular category or a group or a class. Students, now you have learned about how to organize the data and what are the advantages of organizing the data. Before going further, let me give you an activity. Conduct a survey among your class 8th students and collect data on which is the one subject that they like most and prepare a frequency distribution table for the obtained data. Are you clear? Let us continue with this organization of data. Look into another example. The marks obtained for 60 students in a class for the mathematic test out of 50 is given. Look into the given data. It starts from 21, 10, 30, etc., etc. It goes up to 17. This kind of data is called 
ungrouped data. This is called ungrouped because each item has shown as different entity. So, definition for ungrouped data. An ungrouped data is a set of data in which each item is shown as a separate entity. Okay. Now, if we want to organize the data in the way in which we have done in the earlier example like mango, apple, pineapple. If we take each item or the score and start making tally marks and finding out the frequency, then it become very long procedure. So, whenever we have a data of this kind, it is better to put them in various groups. Have you understood? So, how do we find different groups? You look upon the data, what is the lowest score and what is the highest score. When you have identified the lowest score and highest score, the difference between the highest score and the lowest score is called the range. When you have the value of the range, then you can make the groups accordingly. In the present data, the lowest score is 5 and the highest score is 50. So, the range as per the definition range is equal to 50 minus 5 that is equal to 45. So, if we get a value of 45, then we may have to think about forming the groups. If we are taking a cluster of 10 numbers in a group, then we may have to have 5 groups. So, we start with 0 to 10 as the first group, then the next group is 10 to 20, then 20 to 30, then 30 to 40, then 40 to 50. But we also add one more group that is 50 to 60 to accommodate a score of 50. As you have seen that 0 to 10, 10 to 20. So, you may have a question in which group the 10th score falls. As a normal procedure, we use the score in its highest group. That means, if a score of 10 is there, then we want to include that score in 0 to 10, but we will include in 10 to 20. So, the group 40 to 50 will not accommodate the score 50. That is why we have taken one more additional group as 50 to 60. Students, now, how many groups we have? Yes, we have 6 groups starting from 0 to 10 to 50 to 60. In order to construct a frequency distribution table for this data, similar procedure we have used for the earlier example. We make a table with 3 columns. The first column represents the groups, the second column represents the tally mark and the third column represents the frequency. Now, let us start from the first score that is 21, 21 falls in the 20 to 30 th group. So, put a tally against that group. Similarly, we have to take each score and next is 10, 10 falls in second group. So, you proceed like this 
take each score and mark a tally against the group score faults and complete all the scores further you write the total tallies in the third column that is frequency column. So, once you complete this then we get a frequency distribution of this particular data. So, the data represented in such table form is called a frequency distribution for a grouped data. From the obtained table we can make meaningful observations. Can you? Yes. Some of the observations are most of the students have got marks between 20 and 30. Is it correct? Yes. Why? Because this group has got the highest frequency. Eight students have got marks more than 40 out of 50. Is it correct? Because 40 to 50 group has got 7 frequency and 50 to 60 group has got 1 frequency. If we add 7 plus 1 we get 8 which is the result of the students who have got marks more than 40. Let me ask a question. How many students have got marks less than 20? Yes, 12 students have got marks less than 20. How? 0 to 10 group has got 2 frequency, 10 to 20 group has got 10 frequency. If we add 2 plus 10, then it is 12. Students, now, you have learned how to interpret a data when the data is given in the form of frequency distribution table. You have to learn some more terminologies associated with the frequency distribution table. Look into the classes. You have taken six classes. The first class is 0 to 10 and the next class is 10 to 20 and third class is 20 to 30 etcetera. Here each group is called a class interval. So, 0 to 10 is a class interval or sometimes simply we mention it as class. So, 20 to 30 is another class and 50 to 60 is another class. So, we have in total 6 class intervals or 6 classes. When you consider a class 20 to 30, 20 is called as the lower limit of the class and 30 is called as the upper limit of the class. Let us take another class 40 to 50. What is the lower limit of this class? Yes, you are correct. 40 is the lower limit. And what is the upper limit of this class? Yes, 50. You are correct. Further, the difference between the lower limit and the upper limit is called the class size or the width of the class. So, let us find out the width of the class here. Take the first class 0 to 10. What is the lower limit? Lower limit is 0. What is the upper limit? Yes, upper limit is 10. Now, let us calculate the class width or class size class size is equal to upper limit minus lower limit that is equal to 10 minus 0 is equal to 10. Now, you look into the other class intervals. What is your observation? Yes, 10 to 20 what is the class width? 
again 10. Take the class interval 50 to 60, what is the width? Yes, again 10. So, what do you can conclude from this? Yes, you can conclude that in a grouped frequency distribution table, the class width will be same for all class intervals. There are exceptional cases also that you will learn in your higher classes. So, when the data is represented in a frequency distribution table, you can make many more meaningful inferences. So, whenever we have a larger data, to organize the data, we take the help of frequency distribution table. Whenever the data is represented in frequency distribution table, we can also use that data to represent it in a graphical form. We will learn about this also now. Graphical representation of frequency distribution table. In order to understand this, let us take the same example. The marks of 60 students we have put into a frequency distribution table. So, we got the class interval as 0 to 10 and against that a frequency of 2. Next class interval 10 to 20 a frequency of 10, 20 to 30 a frequency of 21, 30 to 40 a frequency of 19, 40 to 50 a frequency of 7, 50 to 60 a frequency of 1 with the total frequency as 60. So, if the data is in this frequency distribution table, how will you make a graphical representation? Whatever the graphical representation you have learned earlier may not be suitable to represent the present data, because this data is a continuous one and also the data is given in different class intervals. In such cases, we will use a graphical representation called histogram. A sample histogram is shown here. Look into the sample histogram. Is it a bar graph? No, but it is similar to bar graph. What is the difference between in a bar graph and this histogram? Yes, in a bar graph each bar is shown as a different entity, but here in this histogram it is shown as adjacent bars. Have you got it? Yes, whenever we have a grouped frequency distribution, the graph represents the data will be in the form of histogram. Now, let us learn how to draw a histogram for the given data. We have class intervals and frequency. Similar in the case of drawing a bar graph, we have to depict x axis as well as y axis with a common origin O. In the y axis, we represent the frequency and in the x axis, we represent the class intervals. Let us see how to represent it. What is our first class interval? 0 to 10. So, origin is showing as 0 and in next one full unit, we consider it as 10. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 we mark in the x axis. In many cases, the class interval may not start from 0 to 10, then you cannot start with the origin. 
whenever we have a discontinuity, we use a symbol kink to show the discontinuity. Kink is basically a break on the axis. Similarly, in the y axis, here we have to take a scale, the highest score is 21. So, to get a good graph, you can take y axis 1 unit is equal to 2 score, score here means number of students. So, we plot 2, 4, 6, 8 till 24. Now, as we have done in the case of bar graph, you represent against each class interval the frequencies in the form of a bar or an equal width bar. So, as the first class is 0 to 10 with a frequency 2, so we may make a bar of proportionate height to that particular class and draw a complete bar. Similarly, for the next class 10 to 20, the frequency is 10. So, we join a complete bar against the frequency and similarly, we will follow till 50 to 60 where the frequency is 1. So, a small bar we get a proportionate small bar. So, join all bars together the obtained graph is called histogram. Look at this as I told earlier this is just looking like a bar graph, but the difference is that these are all adjacent bars. Hope you have understood how to draw a histogram for a grouped frequency distribution. Students, you have learned how to construct a histogram for a grouped frequency table. Let us try to define histogram. Histogram is a graphical representation of a grouped data in the form of continuous bars. Its purpose is to show the frequencies within a class graphically in the form of bars. Are you clear? Students, what all we have learned in this particular episode? Yes, we have learned in this episode how to organize a data, what is a grouped data and ungrouped data, how to make a frequency distribution table, how to draw a histogram when the data is given in the form of grouped distribution. Also, you have learned how to interpret the data when the data is given in grouped form or a frequency distribution table and also when the data is given in graphical representation. Thank you.